The film begins with a stunning display of comets streaking through the sky. The two main characters, Taki Tachibana and Mitsuha Miyamizu, engage in a conversation about time and dreams, touching on how each can result in great loss. As they speak, a fragment of one of the comets falls to earth. Later that night, we see Mitsuha struggling in her sleep and calling out to Taki, asking if he remembers. The following morning, Taki wakes up, but to his surprise, he finds himself in Mitsuha's body. He is initially taken aback by the situation but takes the opportunity to explore Mitsuha's body. Mitsuha's younger sister Yatsuha walks in on him and urges him to come to breakfast. Taki, still in Mitsuha's body, looks at himself in the mirror and is unnerved by the recurring dream of waking up as a girl. Mitsuha joins her grandmother and sister Hitoha for breakfast, seemingly back to her usual self. However, Hitoha and Yatsuha notice her strange behavior from the day before. Later, they watch a broadcast about a comet that will be visible in the sky after a thousand years. On her way to school, Mitsuha meets her friends Katsuhiko and Sayaka. They come across a campaign speech by the local mayor who turns out to be Mitsuha's estranged father. As they walk away, the mayor insults Mitsuha, telling her to stand up straight. During school, Mitsuha discovers a note in her notebook that reads, Who are you? She also learns that she had forgotten where her locker was in her classroom the day before. Sayaka attributes this to the stress Mitsuha is feeling due to the upcoming Miko ritual at the family shrine, which Mitsuha is not excited about. As they walk home, the trio complains about how small their town of Itomori is, and Mitsuha dreams of moving to Tokyo after graduation. Katsuhiko suggests to his friends that they go to a cafe, which excites the girls. However, they soon realize that it is just a vending machine next to a park bench. Mitsuha leaves Sayaka with Katsuhiko and goes home. Sayaka asks Katsuhiko about his future plans, to which he replies that he will most likely stay in town after graduation, as he always has. Meanwhile, Mitsuha, Yatsuha, and Hitoha practice kumihimo, a traditional braiding technique. Hitoha emphasizes the significance of what they are creating. The mayor meets with Katsuhiko's father, a member of the local construction union, to gain their support for his re-election campaign. Katsuhiko is told by his father that he will have to work with them the following weekend, which he finds bothersome. The following night, Mitsuha and Yatsuha perform a ritual for their family shrine, which involves dancing and making kuchi kamikaze, a type of sake made by chewing rice into a paste and fermenting it. Some of Mitsuha's classmates mock her during the ritual, much to her annoyance. Walking the streets of Tokyo, Mitsuha, as Taki, marvels at the sights and sounds of the bustling city. However, the excitement is cut short when she realizes she doesn't know the way to Taki's job. Later that night, Mitsuha, as Taki, experiences a strange phenomenon where she is suddenly back in her own body in Itomori. She frantically tries to figure out what is happening, realizing that she has been switching bodies with Taki. She desperately tries to reach out to Taki, leaving him notes and trying to call him, but to no avail. Despite the confusion and fear, Mitsuha can't help but be excited about the prospect of exploring Tokyo in Taki's body once again. Mitsuha struggles to work as Taki at the restaurant, making several mistakes throughout the night. The situation worsens when a man attempts to scam the establishment for free food. Overwhelmed and unprepared, Mitsuha is on the verge of breaking down. Fortunately, Taki's co-worker, Mizo Kudera, intervenes and handles the situation despite the man cutting her skirt with a box cutter out of spite. Later, Mizo Kudera reveals to Taki that she followed protocol in dealing with the situation, but admits that she wished she could have done more to the con artist. Upon noticing the cut in Mizo Kudera's skirt, Mitsuha offers to mend it. Mizo Kudera finds this gesture charming and mentions that Taki seems to have changed recently, developing a more feminine side. The following day, Taki has no recollection of the previous day's events and is unaware of his co-worker's interest in his relationship with Mizo Kudera. As Mizo Kudera bids everyone a good day and winks at Taki, he turns red-faced in embarrassment. At this point, Taki and Mitsuha have come to the realization that their body-switching dreams are actually happening, so they decide to take steps to help each other out when they switch bodies. They write notes to each other on their smartphones and in notebooks, setting ground rules to avoid interfering with each other's lives. Mitsuha's rules are more focused on etiquette, reminding Taki not to take showers as her, to avoid seeing her naked, and other social cues. 
Meanwhile, Taki gives her tips on his job and warns her not to spend all his hard-earned money on sweets, which would force him to take more shifts at the restaurant. Despite their attempts to play nice, they can't help but have a little fun at each other's expense. Taki makes some people at school fall in love with Mitsuha, while Mitsuha flirts with Mizo Kudera, giving Taki a real shot with her. Both of them become angry with the others meddling, saying, I don't want a relationship. One weekend day, Taki switches with Mitsuha and finds himself with her and her sisters as they travel to the family shrine deep in the forest. While they walk, Hitoha discusses the concept of unions, whether it's the braids they create, time itself, or even a drink they take, unions are formed every day. The trio successfully arrives at the shrine and offers the sake they made during the ceremony. After waking up, Taki checks his phone and finds a message from Mizo Kudera, inviting him for a date in 15 minutes. Confused, he consults his notes and realizes that Mitsuha arranged the date for him. Taki rushes to get ready and leaves his house in a hurry to meet Mizo Kudera. Meanwhile, Mitsuha prepares for her day, braiding her hair with a ritual cord. As she looks in the mirror, she sees tears in her eyes, surprising herself. She wishes to have gone on the date with Taki herself. Taki and Mizo Kudera go to an expensive restaurant, and although they both like each other, Taki is nervous and distracted. His thoughts are on something else. While they view a photo display, Taki is captivated by a set of pictures that remind him of Mitsuha's town. Mizo Kudera observes that she found him more appealing when he acted strange, but now he is different. Taki tries to extend the date, but Mizo Kudera declines, acknowledging that Taki has a crush on someone else, which is causing him to act differently. Taki attempts to contact Mitsuha after making up his mind. Meanwhile, Mitsuha has cut her hair and attends the local town festival with her friends. As the comet finally becomes visible, Mitsuha witnesses a part of it breaking off and falling. In Tokyo, Taki is disheartened when he cannot connect with Mitsuha and yearns for another switch. However, this does not happen again after that night. Taki spends his days sketching Ito Mori from memory, hoping to locate where Mitsuha lives but with little success. Eventually, he decides to leave the city in search of the town and to finally meet Mitsuha, accompanied by Mizo Kudera and Sakasa for support. They visit numerous places but cannot find the town Taki has depicted. Just when they are about to give up, they stop at a local restaurant where the owner recognizes Taki's sketch as Ito Mori. When Taki inquiries about the distance to the town, the owner hesitates before explaining that Ito Mori was destroyed by a comet fragment three years ago, killing over 500 people. Taki is brought to the outskirts of Ito Mori, where he sees the devastating aftermath of the comet's impact. He attempts to share Mitsuha's notes with his companions, but they vanish without explanation, leaving him bewildered. In a local library, the trio discovers reports of the disaster and a roster of the deceased, which includes Mitsuha, her sister, and her friends. Taki is stunned and grief-stricken, realizing that he has some inexplicable connection to a deceased girl. They procure a hotel room for the night, and Sakasa asks Mizo Kudera for her opinion regarding Taki's recent conduct and his claims about Mitsuha. Although Mizo Kudera acknowledges the oddity of the situation, she notes that Taki has always been a kind person, but has become an even better version of himself since his involvement with this girl. Later, Mizo Kudera and Taki converse, and she takes note of a braid adorning his wrist. Taki states that he received it a few years ago, but he cannot recall who gave it to him or why he wears it frequently, apart from the belief that it brings him good luck. As he slumbers, Mitsuha's voice calls out to him to remember. The following morning, Mizo Kudera discovers a note from Taki requesting that they return home without him as he has something he must attend to first. Taki journeys to Ito Mori and locates the shrine belonging to Mitsuha's family. Once inside, he finds the sake that Mitsuha and her sister had left there. Believing that drinking it would allow him to establish one last connection with her and potentially save her, Taki consumes some of it. However, he loses his balance and falls which sends him on a journey where he witnesses Mitsuha's entire life, including her happy childhood, her mother's death, her father's abandonment of the family, her grandmother's care for them, and finally the comet's destruction of the town. Upon regaining consciousness, Taki finds himself in Mitsuha's body and realizes that he has a final opportunity to prevent the impending disaster. He discovers that it is the day of the comet's arrival and that the town will soon be destroyed. While attempting to inform Hitoha, Mitsuha's grandmother, about the impending catastrophe, 
she recognizes that someone else has taken over her granddaughter's body, as she had a similar experience when she was younger. This leads Taki to speculate that Mitsuha's family line may have had such connections. As Mitsuha, Taki informs her friends, Katsuhiko and Sayaka, about the comet and convinces them to help. They come up with a plan to disable the town's power using explosives from Katsuhiko's father's construction company. Sayaka will then broadcast an emergency message instructing everyone to evacuate to the school, which is outside the comet's range. However, they still need to persuade the mayor, Mitsuha's father, of the situation's seriousness. Taki heads to Mitsuha's father, but the man only sees his daughter as insane and orders her to see a doctor. Furious, Taki grabs him by the tie and begins to scream before both of them freeze. Mitsuha's father notices that the person before him is not his daughter. Despite this, Taki's warning goes unheeded. Believing that his body with Mitsuha inside is near the shrine, Taki hurries there to find her. Meanwhile, Mitsuha wakes up in Taki's body in the present day and discovers the town in ruins. She wonders if she has died. Mitsuha recalls the day she went to Tokyo to meet Taki, hoping that they would recognize their connection. She coincidentally meets him on the train, but he does not recognize her since their connection started three years after her death. Disappointed, she leaves the train, but Taki senses something and calls out to her. She removes her braid and tosses it to him, asking him to remember her name. Taki and Mitsuha finally reach the shrine, but they cannot see each other due to being separated by time. However, during the magic hour in a specific location, they can finally see and meet each other for the first time. Taki returns her braid, and she ties up her hair. Taki suggests they write their names on each other's hands to remember. Taki writes his name, but as Mitsuha goes to write hers, the connection breaks. Taki wakes up on the outskirts of the destroyed Itomori, unaware of his purpose there or the name of the girl who haunts his memory. He returns to Tokyo, leaving behind his confusion and the devastation of the town. Meanwhile, in the past, Mitsuha carries out her plan with her friends to save the town. They blow up the power grid and activate emergency power, but many people ignore the warning and fail to evacuate. The mayor is also suspicious of the warning and tries to stop it. Sayaka is eventually caught and the warning is turned off, leaving Mitsuha with only one hope, to convince her father. As she runs towards him, Mitsuha becomes increasingly hopeless as she struggles to remember Taki's name. She falls and looks at her hand, where Taki had written I love you instead of his name. Overwhelmed with emotion, Mitsuha continues to run until she reaches her father's location. Unfortunately, Despite their efforts, the comet fragment still strikes the town, leading to its destruction. After five years have passed, Taki finishes his high school and college education and is now trying to establish himself as an architect. However, his fervent views on preserving cities in the event of disasters make him appear foolish during job interviews, resulting in few to no job offers. One day, Taki receives a call from Ms. Okudara asking to meet up. They meet and catch up and she brings up the day they visited Itomori. Taki confesses he doesn't remember much about that day or why he was so fixated on the town. As it turns out, reality has been altered. Mitsuha was able to persuade her father of the danger, and coupled with her daring plan, the entire town was evacuated to a location outside of the blast radius. The town was destroyed, but no one perished. Taki remains oblivious to his role in averting the disaster or the girl he helped rescue. Before they depart, Ms. Okudera expresses her hope that Taki will someday find happiness. In a diner, Taki overhears a couple bickering about their wedding plans. He realizes it is Sayaka and Katsuhiko, who were saved by Taki and Mitsuha. Taki feels a momentary connection, but dismisses it as nothing. Taki spends every day wandering the streets, searching for a woman whose hair is tied up in a specific braid. One day, as Taki and Mitsuha cross paths, they feel a strange connection, but decide it must be nothing. Later on, they find themselves on different subways, yet they still feel the pull towards each other. After disembarking, they frantically search the city, trying to locate one another. Taki sees a woman ascending a staircase and passes her by as she descends, but the connection between them intensifies. Unable to ignore it any longer, Taki calls out to the woman, who turns out to be Mitsuha. They both feel as if they have met before and ask each other for their name. With tears in her eyes, Mitsuha confirms that she feels the same way as Taki. 
the audience is left to surmise that they will ultimately recover their memories and be together romantically. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this animated movie and found it entertaining. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more animated movies like this. I put a lot of effort into creating these animations, so your support means a lot to me. If you have any feedback or suggestions for future animations, please leave a comment below. Once again, thank you for watching and I look forward to sharing more animated movies with you soon.